All right, here we are with the capstone exercise. I've got my instructions in front of me, got the Excel sheet open. We're looking at an analysis of a company that runs or a, or a theater and that does musicals and stuff. So that's a little bit of context for what we're looking at. So uh, step one is done because I have my sheet open. So that's finished. Step two. We're going to center the title Sugar House District Theater over the data columns, increase the font size, and do a different color. Okay, so we've got our title here in A1, and we're going to make it go from A1 to G1. So that's out here. So I'm going to drag and then merge and center to get it to merge all the cells into one and bring it in the middle. So now you can see when you click on it, it's one big long cell. Next thing is we're going to change our font size to 20. So I can do that just like Word, like that. And then apply a purple font color. All right, so font color just like Word, drop down, and purple is there. Step two, done. All right, now we want the performance date to display, including the weekday centered below the title. So we're going to type uh, 4 slash 16 slash 2021 in cell A2. So A2 is here. 4 slash 16 slash 2021. So we've done that. Uh, we need to apply the long date number format. So that, so number formats, the drop down here. And we want long date. So I'll click on that. So it doesn't fit in the cell. That's when you get, if something doesn't fit, it gives you all the hashtags throughout the entire cell. So we'll be dealing with that in a second. So we want to apply the note cell style. So again, cell styles is over here on the home tab and we want note. And lastly, we're gonna merge and center the date over the range A2 to G2. So click and drag to G2 and merge and center. All right, so now that the cell is big enough, you can see that the, the uh, information shows correctly. So we're good there now. So that's step three done. Um, so now we're gonna insert a new row for orchestra back. All right, so insert a new row above row nine between right and left. So row nine is here. So if you click on the cell where you want a new row above so you have to click on basically the one underneath where you want the new one so we want it uh above row nine between right and left so i'm going to click on the one underneath it and hit insert here so i went above where i had selected so you can highlight the entire row by clicking the numbers and then you hit the insert button there okay so uh, now we have our new row is number nine, and we're going to copy the, the data from A5 to A9. So A5 is here. I'm going to copy, Control C, paste it to A9, Control V, and then change the name. So it's instead of saying front, so if you double click, you can start editing, or you can just do it up here, whichever one you want. We need to say back. All right. So that's it for step four. Step five, we are going to, so we're going to distinguish the specific locations from the main section headings, okay. So we're gonna indent the text and after that, we're going to widen the column. All right, so uh, we're gonna indent twice the data and ranges A6, A8, A10 to 12, A14 to 17. All right, so five to eight, or six to eight, pardon me. And the indent, just like Excel or Word is over here, increase, so we're gonna do it twice, one, two. And then we gotta do the same thing to this and the same thing to this. All right. And then we're gonna change the width of the col of column A to 18. So to do that, you can right click on the A on the top of the column and you'll see an option called column width. Click on that. And we want it to be 18, so type 18 in the box and hit OK. There we go. So now our column is bigger. Step five done. Step six. Um, so we want to copy that. We're going to copy the formats from A4 
down to the other heading. So we're going to use Format Painter to copy cell A4 to the range B4 to G4. So this format to all of these ones across. So just like Word, Format Painter, click on it to select the formatting here, and then click and drag to apply it to uh, A4 to G4. Here we go. Done. All right, so that's that. However, we can't read the entire title, so we're going to wrap the text in each of these to make it look a lot better. So we're going to highlight all the headings, and we need to wrap text in horizontally center. Okay, so wrap text up here. Horizontally center. We'll choose that alignment. And then the last thing we need to do is change the row height to uh, the height of row four to 30. So just like changing the width, you right click on the row that you wanna change and you'll see row height as an option. And we want that to be 30. Um, so I'll type in 30, hit okay. All right, so it doesn't look good, but we'll fix it in a second. So we need for step eight, to basically what it says is we've decided to change the word purchased to sold and we're going to use find and replace to do that all in one go so to do that you can hit Control f and you'll get the find and replace menu pop up we're going to do some replacing so i'll hit that tab so we want to find purchased with a capital and then change it to sold with a capital and you can hit replace all and we'll do it all in one go so i'm going to do that all right, so it tells me how many it did. It did three, and I'll hit close because I'm done. So you can see now everything that we changed the naming fits beautifully. Step eight, we are done. Step nine, apparently there's spelling mistakes and we need to fix them. So just like in Word, we go to the review tab and spelling. So I'll continue from the beginning of the sheet, sure. Okay, section is spelled wrong. I'm going to change that. Percentages is spelled wrong, so I'm going to change that, and we're done. All right, so that's step nine. Over the page. All right, we're into formulas again here. So we are going to enter the formula to calculate the percentage of seats sold for the performance. So that would be in this column here. So we're going to do it in E6. All right, that's where I am. Uh, we're going to do it by dividing the seats sold by the seats in the section. All right, so again, to do a formula, hit the equal sign, and we're doing seats sold divided by, so that's the slash that lives with the question mark, divided by the total seats in the section. And I'm going to hit enter. All right. Um, so we're going to copy that formula down E7 to E17. So click on the cell with your formula. Hover over the bottom right hand corner until your cursor is the little black cross and drag down all the way. All right, uh, it's telling us we need to delete the formulas on an E9 and 13 since those rows are empty because those are just title rows. So we can click on those and hit the delete key. So that's gone. So we're done step 10. Step 11. We're going to calculate uh, the percentage of seats not sold. So to do that, we're going to do an F6. So that's over here. Uh, and we're going to do it by subtracting the percentage sold from 1. So we're going to go equals 1 minus percentage sold and hit enter. And we'll get the percentage not sold. We're then going to copy it down just like we did for the other ones. Drag and then delete the info from the rows with the headings. All right. So we're done that. Next, in step 12, we are going to enter the enter a formula to calculate the gross revenue from the seats that were sold. So to do that, we're going to calculate it in G6. All right. And we're going to do it by multiplying seats sold by the price per seat. Okay, so I have to hit my equal sign. 
seats sold 182 click on that cell multiply shift 8 and then the price per seat click on that and hit enter all right so 20930 and then we need to fill down like we've done the rest of the time and then delete the numbers in the rows with the headings all right step 12 is done step 13 we've got to do some formatting because our numbers look kind of crappy so we are going to apply the accounting number format with zero decimal places to d6 to d17 and g6 to g17 all right so d6 to 17 is this so we want accounting format so that's in our home tab drop down accounting we want to get rid of the decimal places one two gone and we're going to do that same one for g6 to g17 so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to cheat and use my format painter so i'm going to click on the cell i just finished formatting format painter and copy that down. there we go so we're done step 13. step 14 um so percentage sold and percentage not sold does not look very good so we are going to format those as percentages um, with one decimal place so i'm going to highlight that entire area find the format of percentage and reduce the decimal place by one there we go so that's it for step 14. step 15 so after we reviewed the data we decided that we wanted to move price per seat to the left of the gross revenue data. So we're going to insert a new column G. So to do that, um, we're going to click on the top where it says G. And so in rows, you select underneath where you want to put a new row. For columns, you select to the right of where you want a new column. So I've selected G. If I hit insert, It'll bump existing G into H, and I have a new G there. So worked perfectly. So we need to select and move the range D4 to 17. So that's D4 to 17. And move it to G4 to G17. So I'm going to hit Control X to cut. And then when you're pasting, you click on the top cell of where you want things to go, or say the leftmost cell if it's going across. So I click here. You can also highlight the whole thing if you want, but you don't have to. So I'm going to hit Control V, and it puts it down there. Now we have an empty column, D. If you click on D, so it highlights the entire column, and hit the Delete button, it'll delete the column and squish everything over. Perfect. Worked exactly how we want it. Step 15 is done. Now we want to center the values in the seats in section and seats sold columns. So we are going to horizon, uh, center horizontally B6 to C17. So B6 to C17. Uh, so horizontally center. So I'm just the uh, alignment there. Done. Uh, and then we're going to apply right align and indent twice the data in d6 to e17 so d6 e17 so we want align right and then we want uh double indent okay so our indents are here so we want to increase our indent one two all right so we're done step 16 there Step 17, we're going to add some borders. You're familiar with borders from Word. So we're going to apply outside borders to A4, G4, A5, G8, A9, G12, and uh, A13, G17, one at a time. Okay, so first one, A4, G4, that's this heading row. The borders button you can find in the font area here, and we want to hit the drop down because we want outside borders. So that now has a black border around the outside. Now A5G8, that's this. 
Because we've set this as outside borders already, you can just click the main button without having to do the drop down every time. So I can click that. Next, A9, G12. And then A13, G17. All right, so now we have borders between everything. Everything's in a nice little box. It looks great. So step 18, we are going to format our worksheet a little bit. Uh, we're going to do some margin work. So we're going to set a one inch top margin and center the worksheet horizontally. So if you remember from the mid level, we're going to do that in the page layout tab. Page setup, we're going to go to the page setup dialog box. And in the margins tab, we're going to set the top margin to one. So I can click on that up arrow once, it'll change to one. And we're going to center it uh, horizontally. So center on page horizontally. And when we're done that, we can hit OK. All right, so that's done. Again, you don't see any change here. It's only when you print the change will uh, be visible. Next, we want to insert a footer with some information. So I'm going to go back to the page setup dialog box, header and footer tab, custom footer, and start entering the information as instructed. So it needs to say exploring series on the left, the sheet code. So find your button that says sheet code. There you go. And then in the right section is going to be the file name code. So that one there. And when you have all that, you can hit OK. And hit OK again, because we're done step 19. All right. So now that we're on step 20, we're going to rename the sheet that we're working on. You can see it's currently named Sheet 1. So you can right click on it and hit Rename and do 4-16-2021. And then when you're done, you can click somewhere else and it'll kind of lock it in and, and be done with it. Now we need to copy the worksheet and place the duplicate sheet to the right and then rename it as 417 2021. So to copy, I'm going to right click my existing sheet, move or copy. I'm going to create a copy. If you don't click this box, it'll just move your sheet to a different area, not create the copy. And move to the end means farthest to the right. So I want that. And I'll hit OK. So now we need to rename. This time I'm going to rename by double clicking the name. And we want it to be 417. We don't want this 2 in parentheses there. I'm going to get rid of that. And I'll hit click somewhere else to lock it in. So we're done step 20. And step 21, we want to use this duplicate worksheet and have it ready to enter the data from the April 17th performance. So make sure you're clicked on your April 17th one. And we're going to change the date in A2 to the 17th. So I'm going to click in A2 and change it to the 17th. Hit enter when done. And then delete the values in C6 to C17. OK, C6 to C17. So those are seats sold. We don't know what's going to sell tomorrow. So we're going to get rid of that. Hit the delete key. And then you're ready just to input that stuff. And everything will update as we wish. So we're done. But I'm going to show you what print preview would look like. So I'm going to hit File Print. And we get our print preview here. You can see. It's centered in the page. We've got our footer here. Uh, my file name is super long, so it overlaps my sheet name. Not a, not a big deal um, because we're not doing anything with this. But since we're done, I'll hit back. And this is it. We are done the capstone exercise.